My brothers and sisters, what is going on, everybody? Still sermon in the house on this Monday afternoon with another video, and these are my week four picks as my terrible season continues. As I am recording this, I am currently seven and eight. Uh, this was the only time that I could really carve out time for this week to record my week four picks, so uh, not everything is probably going to be up and accurate. So I apologize for that. I got a busy week coming this week. But anyway, um, I'm going to have my final record and my, uh, you know, all the lines and, you know, my totals from uh, week three put up. But uh, yeah, as of right now, Monday afternoon, these are my week four picks of the 2022 NFL season. And uh, yeah, so... I'm going to start off with my biggest winner and loser for week three. So my biggest winner for week three for this week, I think I'm going to have to go two for two with the Miami Dolphins. I think the Miami Dolphins once again are my biggest winner for this week as, you know, they, they come down, they come from behind from a, fantastic 21 point deficit against the Baltimore Ravens last week and they pull off a shocking victory then they come back down to Miami to play the Buffalo Bills who are a lot of people's favorites to win the Super Bowl this year and they rally from a deficit and they actually knock off the Bills they hand the Bills their first loss of the season they beat them 21 and 19 Tua Tagovailoa in that game got injured. He came back, and he was a soldier all the way through, and he guided Miami to a victory as the Dolphins are the first team to knock off the Buffalo Bills this year. So, yeah, two winners of the week, and both of them, for me, go down to South Beach for the Miami Dolphins. My biggest loser for this week. This one took me a lot of time to consider – but I'm going to have to go with the San Francisco 49ers, more specifically Jimmy Garoppolo. That was an inexcusable game that the Niners had last night. They had an early 7-0 lead, and all they could muster was a field goal. The mistakes continue for Jimmy Garoppolo, man. Um, Just a very poor loss for Jimmy Garoppolo. He fumbled twice. He threw two interceptions, I believe. And the 49ers, I mean... You know, they just did not play well at all last night. And, of course, Jimmy Garoppolo had that safety that was shades of Dan Orlovsky in 2008. You know, he, he rolled to the back of the end zone, and he completed, and he tried to complete a pass. It ended up being an interception, but it was a safety instead. So, I think Jimmy Garoppolo cost the 49ers the game last night, and that's why they're off to a sluggish 1-2 and two start. So, uh, yeah, 49ers, a.k.a. Jimmy Garoppolo, they're my biggest loser for week three. All right, so without further ado, as I always say, if you're new to the tournament, remember that spread predictions are the only game that you need per score predictions for now. Other than that, you don't have to do score predictions for every single game. So uh, without further ado, let's get on to it. These are my week four picks of the 2022 NFL season, and I need a good week badly, man. I think any one of us can uh, attest to that. But yeah, let's get started. These are my week four picks. All righty, kicking things off, we got the Thursday night game, which should be a pretty interesting one. We got the Miami Dolphins heading to Cincinnati to play the Bengals, as the Dolphins, as I mentioned, coming off handing Buffalo their first loss of the year. They are 3-0. and the Miami Dolphins are 3 and 0. Who would have who would have seen that coming? I mean, sure everyone could have expected Miami to be better this year, but wow, 3 and 0. Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle playing up to advertise to attack of Iola. He has just proven that everyone underestimated him too early and the Miami Dolphins, they're looking like a real good squad right now. They look legit. Then you got the Cincinnati Bengals. They pulled it off against the New York Jets. A little bit of controversy in that game as T. Higgins' heels were out of bounds. A lot of Bengals fans saying that he got robbed, but it is an NFL rule that when you're in the corner of the end zone like that, your heels have to stay in bounds. So that is the correct call. It's just a bad technicality rule. 
But regardless, the Bengals get their first win. They avoid 0-3. They are 1-2 on the season. So for this game, um, I think it's going to have to come down to who makes less mistakes as a quarterback because Joe Burrow, you know, he's made a lot of mistakes early in the season so far. The four interceptions he threw against us and the, you know, getting sacked all them times at the, to start the season. So, I mean, I know the offensive line hasn't played up to advertise, but let me tell you, Burrow is just as accountable for those sacks that his offensive line is. It's both of their faults. So, really, I mean, there's no excuse for Joe Burrow anymore, man. He has all this firepower to throw to, and he's still making mistakes. Tua has been very mistake-free so far. Miami's offense is clicking and playing as advertised, and I think that that's just the biggest X factor. I think Miami is the team that just makes the fewer the fewer mistakes. And honestly, I think they go on the road to Cincinnati and knock off the Bengals to go to 4-0. Who would have thought that I'd be sitting here saying the Dolphins are going to get the 4-0? Not I. It's just Miami. They are not a good team right now. Miami's clicking on all cylinders right now. And I am a believer in Miami so far, man. I'm going to go with the Miami Dolphins to get the 4-0. Give me the Dolphins. Okay, uh, kicking off the uh, Sunday slate of games, and uh, yes, it is back, my new my uh, new subscribers. Every time there's a London game going on, I do the good old British accent for this one, as we have our first game in London this season, as the Minnesota Vikings, who are coming off a comeback win over the Detroit Lions, they head on over to London to play the New Orleans Saints, as the Saints are coming off a loss to the Carolina Panthers. Uh, not much to say about this one. The Vikings, they're playing pretty well. They had they, they trialed that game that game all day against Detroit before they uh, mounted a comeback and defeated them. So they are now two and one on the season. So a very good. Uh, response after getting blown out of the water by uh, the Philadelphia Eagles on uh, last Monday night. So a really good response by the Vikings there. Then you got the New Orleans Saints. Uh, just a disappointing day for them. They should honestly be 0-3. They needed Atlanta to choke, which is what they do best in Week 1 to beat the Falcons. And then uh, they drop one to the Carolina Panthers. And uh, New Orleans is off to a very rubbish 1-2 and two start to the season. I just don't know what it is with uh, New Orleans. They are just not playing well. They are not having any form of cohesion on that team whatsoever. Meanwhile, you got Minnesota. They are still an offensive juggernaut. They have that defense that can contain opponents. So, uh, yeah, Jerio, when in doubt, I just go with the team that I think is better talented-wise, and I think right now that is the Minnesota Vikings. I think that they win this London game, and they improve to 3-1, and one, and the New Orleans Saints, I think that they are in a world of trouble right now. Give me the Minnesota Vikings to knock off the Saints to improve to 3-1. and one. Jerry old governor. All right, now that that's over, next up. We are returning to the States as we head on down to Atlanta as the Cleveland Browns take on the Atlanta Falcons as the Browns. We all know Thursday night they defeated us 29-17. Nick Chubb ran the ball right down our throats Thursday night. Um, they, of course, had that hilarious play to end the game last week, but honestly, we should never have been in that position because... Mitch Trubisky's a bum. Matt Canada had questionable play calling again, and we're sitting at a one and two deficit. Uh, meanwhile, the Browns are two and one. They're winning games big with Jacoby Brissett and uh, Nick Chubb leading the way per usual. Kareem Hunt getting his touches in as well. So the Browns are looking pretty solid so far, even with Jacoby Brissett. Atlanta, they're coming off a win over the Seahawks in Seattle, and they are one and two. They avoid zero and three. Marcus Mariota. Finally leading the team to a victory. Atlanta doing just enough to get the job done. The thing with the Falcons is that they're not a good team, but they have kept it competitive this year, even though that they're 1-2 and two on the year. And uh, I do think that that trend could continue, but for this one, I'm going to go ahead and say the Cleveland Browns 
get the three and one. I like the way they're playing. I just don't think Atlanta is going to have enough on defense to stop Nick Chubb in the run game that they got in general. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Cleveland Browns to improve to three and one. Next up, we got the Washington Commanders and the Dallas Cowboys. This one is down in Dallas as the Commanders got absolutely obliterated by Philly 24 to 8. Carson Wentz had a terrible game against his former team, and Washington is in trouble as well as they are 1 and 2. Then he got the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, they play the New York Giants tonight. They are 1 and 1. Cooper Rush is going to start that game for Dallas. You know, this one was a little tough for me to decide because I can't really judge the Cowboys just yet because they play the Giants still. However, I'd be more confident if Dak Prescott didn't get hurt because Dak Prescott does very well against the NFC East. So we don't know about the unforeseeable future that uh, the Cowboys have with Cooper Rush in this game because if you remember, when these two teams played each other both times in 2020, Washington blew them out when Dak Prescott wasn't there for the Cowboys. So, I don't know. I mean, Dallas's defense is playing really well. I mean, Mark, Micah Parsons is having a great year for him so far. Their secondary is looking real strong. I think the Cowboys can win some games, even with Cooper Rush. And I think that when Dak Prescott gets back, I think that they'll still be in good enough shape to uh, compete in the NFC playoff picture. Washington, I don't know. I just can't find any redeeming qualities with them right now. They're just not a really well-coached team. Their offense is stagnant. Their defense really isn't good. So I am not sure who to go with, so I will go with my usual logic and roll with the home team. I'm going to go with the Dallas Cowboys to get the job done over Washington in a tight one, but an ugly one. Give me the Cowboys to improve to at least 2-2. Two and two. Give me Dallas for this one. Next up, we got the Seahawks. Flying out to Detroit, the venue where they lost Super Bowl 40 to us. But this time, instead of playing the Steelers, they are playing the Lions, who are 1-2. and two. Seattle, 1-2 and two themselves as they drop one at home to Atlanta. And uh, the Seahawks fought back a little bit, but they just did not have it in the end to knock off the Falcons as they are 1-2. and two. So I guess that Seattle... They kind of are who we thought they were, you know, just a mediocre team with a mediocre quarterback, and it's just going to be a long year for them. They're just not competitive this year, and it just showed that week one, it was lost by Denver more than won by Seattle. So there's that by the Seahawks. Meanwhile, you got Detroit. They are an interesting group this year, even though they're one and two. They had the Vikings on the ropes, and then they couldn't close it out against them, but but uh, St. Brown, I mean, that guy is just continuing to improve as the weeks go by. I mean, yeah, you know, the Lions, they're still very young. They still have problems on defense. So you understand that a team like that, you know, that they have trouble learning how to close out games sometimes. I don't think that'll be the case this week for the Lions. As a matter of fact, I got this being my block for the week right here. I don't like the Seahawks in this game. I think that they are poorly mismatched for this game because Detroit... They know how to put some points on the board. They know how to run the ball. They know how to get their players involved. And I think Detroit, they might be a team that can compete for a playoff spot this year if they keep if they uh, keep this up. I don't think they'll make the playoffs this year, but give them next year and especially a couple of years, Detroit could be a team that could give some people problems. So, uh, yeah, I like the Lions for this one. They're favored by six and a half for this game. And I think the Lions, they, they will just uh, take it to Seattle here to show everyone that they're closer to being competitive than they think. I'm going to go with the Detroit Lions to improve to two and two. Give me the Lions, man. All right, next up, AFC South Showdown in Indianapolis. We got the Titans at the Colts. As the Titans avoid 0-3, a big win for them. They are 1-2 on the season. As the Colts, they also avoid being winless through three games as they did the unthinkable. They knocked off Patrick Mahomes' Chiefs in the month of September with a comeback win over the Chiefs. 
So Tennessee's one and two. Indy is one, one, and one. So all ones for Indianapolis. Again, this was a little bit of a hard one for me to think about. On one hand, I think Tennessee has finally found a little bit of rhythm on offense, but their pass defense is still very bad. I don't think they really have that much to worry about for this game as far as the passing attack goes for the Colts because Matt Ryan, I mean, that guy, he he needs to call it a career. The Colts won in spite of him. Let's be honest. Matt Ryan did not play well, you know, against Kansas City even though they came out on top. It was the defense and the run game that won that game for the Colts. So uh, on the other hand, I have to say, Indianapolis, I believe they have the defense that can limit Derrick Henry at least a little bit, but not to the fullest. So that's why I'm kind of torn on this game. However, I'm going to say the X factor that lies out for me here is, ironically, the quarterback. Sure, both teams are not doing well as far as their quarterback situation goes, but I think right now Tennessee has a slightly hotter hand right now as far as their quarterback situation goes, because they don't have to keep starting Ryan Tannehill, they can just throw in Malik. They can uh, just throw in Malik Willis whenever they feel like he's ready. You know, kind of like another football team should do with a rookie quarterback. But I digress. I just think Tennessee's just a little bit more loaded on offense, and I think that's your difference maker here. I just don't trust the Colts. I'm gonna go with the Tennessee Titans to get the job done over the Indianapolis Colts to improve to 500, dropping the Colts to 1-2-1. and one. Give me Tennessee to knock off Indianapolis. All right, next up, we got the Chicago Bears and the New York Giants. This one is, in the, is at uh, MetLife. The Bears coming off a win over the Texans. They are surprisingly 2-1 on the season. While the Giants, they have yet to play in Week 3. They play the Dallas Cowboys tonight on Monday Night Football. They're currently 2-0 as I'm recording this. Um, Honestly, win or lose this game for the Giants, I think that they are still headed in the right direction. Because think about it. They had, they had started 0-2 for the last five years, and Brian DeBall, I think, is just doing a magnificent job with this young group of players right now. And uh, especially Saquon Barkley, I think that that guy has rejuvenate has uh, rejuvenated his career, and uh, the defense is starting to play well for the Giants. I mean, like I said, I mean they're not great, but they're certainly not terrible. I mean, it's just a team that's just finding an identity. The Chicago Bears, um, they got a little bit lucky against the Houston Texans. They are two and one. They could easily be zero and three. So I really think that. When you look at it in a, you know, at the big picture of everything, I think that these two are very similar teams. But again, it kind of comes down to who has the more overall complete team right now. And I think the Giants just have that kind of team right now. I think Brian DeBall is just doing a good job with them. I think they're a better coach team. I just don't think Chicago is a really well coached team. And I think the Giants are going to continue to take these small victories and continue to build off of them. So I am going to go with the New York Giants to possibly get the 4-0. Wow. So yeah, I'm going to go with the New York Giants, knock off the Chicago Bears. Give me the G-Men to beat the Bears. Next up, we got one of the easier ones. We got the Jaguars at the Eagles. This one is in Philly. Maybe not so easy now because considering what Jacksonville did to L.A., yesterday in LA you might want to look be on the lookout for Jacksonville maybe the Jags are better than I thought maybe the Chargers are just really overrated I don't know what the deal is but what the Jags did yesterday was phenomenal back-to-back wins by at least 20 points Trevor Lawrence played amazing against the Chargers it looks like he started he's starting to improve and it looks like this Jacksonville team is just starting to form some kind of cohesion with each other. The Jags, they, they finally look like they're starting to head in the right direction. But I just think they're running into the better team this week, and that is the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, Jalen, Jalen Hurts has looked really impressive so far. That defense Philly has is just playing on par. And I just think that Nick Sirianni's just doing a phenomenal job with this Eagle team that no one thought would be this way this year. 
well, coming into last year, I should uh, clarify, beginning of last year, no one thought the Eagles would be competitive for at least two years. But uh, they are way ahead of schedule, and they have they have shown it, man. I like how this Philly team is playing, and I think they get the job done to get the 4-0. Give me the Eagles to knock off the Jags to get to 4-0. I do got Jacksonville making it a little close, but I just think the Eagles are just the better team. Give me Philly to improve to 4-0. All right, we got my game next. We got the New York Jets and the Pittsburgh Steelers. This one is in Heinz Field. The Jets are 1-2 coming off a loss to the Bengals. We are 1-2 coming off a loss last Thursday to the Cleveland Browns. So, going to cover more of this in my preview, but I do have things to say. I've heard reports that Zach Wilson could be starting this game for the Jets. I don't know fully. You might, you know, if you want the full story, ask a Jets fan. That's just what I've heard from speculation. So I don't know what the Jets are doing as far as quarterbacks this weekend goes. And it's pretty funny I mention that because I don't know what we should be doing with quarterbacks this coming Sunday. We all know the logical answer is to start Kenny Pickett because Mitch Trubisky has just played terrible these first three games, and I just don't expect it to stop anytime soon. Yes, I know the defense is gassed, and I know the defense is banged up because we don't have T.J. Watt for an extended period of time, but uh, still, players that we're counting on to be next man up, they ain't stepping up. Alex Highsmith, he's been incredibly disappointing so far. Malik Reed has done next to nothing. Devin Bush, I, I-, I want that guy out of here. Plain and simple. I want him gone. Terrell Edmonds, less said the better. Guys are an absolute first round bust. And I said it from the day that we drafted him that he'd be a bust. You know, just terrible. You know, these receivers have got to be so angry with the quarterback situation right now. And, you know, Deontay Johnson, he had the right to be frustrated when Mitch overshot him on Thursday because, you know, he overshot him. Threw the ball out of bounds when Deontay was open. He had a guy within like five yards of him. It's the easiest throw Mitch is ever going to make in his life. Nope. Overshoots him. I'm just waiting to hear about how that's Matt Canada's fault. And something else that is not Matt Canada's fault. How is it his fault when George Pickens is open, according to him, 90% of the time, and Mitch isn't seeing him, and Mitch is missing him. How is that Matt Canada's fault? It's not his fault. That's Mitch's fault. Now, granted, George Pickens made an unbelievable catch against the Browns on Thursday night, but that doesn't uh, that doesn't erase all the times that he's been missed by Mitch. The point is, see what the problem is? Mitch is just not the guy. And if Mike Tomlin is as good of a coach that everyone says that he is, he would bench Mitch and he would give Kenny Pickett his opportunity. This week, I would be on board, 100% be on board with starting Mitch with uh, starting Kenny Pickett. I think this needs to be his first start. He can't do worse than Mitch. Plain and simple. Meanwhile, the New York Jets, I mean, they had a great comeback last week against the Browns. Then it looked like they just kind of came back to reality against the Bengals. I don't know what the deal with the Jets is. I don't follow them. Again, ask a Jets fan. I just don't think the Jets are... I mean, they're, they're, they're better than what they usually are, but still, they're just, you know, years away from competing, in my opinion. <sighs> Listen, if we start Mitch for this game, I think that our chances of losing are still going to be high. I don't care who the Jets have injured. I don't care who they have starting a quarterback. We need to counter that with starting Kenny Pickett. Plain and simple. So... I'm going to give the Steelers one last chance here. I got us winning to improve to 500-2-2 and the losing streak because the next couple weeks are not going to be easy at all. We go to Buffalo after this. Then we come back home to play Tampa. 
And then after that, I believe we're at Miami for Sunday night. And then after that, we go to Philly, where we not only haven't won there since 1965, but the Eagles are playing great football right now. Okay? We have to win this game and build off of momentum if we're, if we're going to have a chance at any one of those next four games. Because there is a very distinct possibility that we could be 1-7 and seven at the bye. And it honestly should be 0-8. Oh it really should. But regardless, last chance for the Steelers for a little bit. I got us beating the Jets, but I got the Jets making it close. Give me the Steelers. Alrighty, speaking of the Bills, next up we got probably the game of the week. We got the Buffalo Bills at the Baltimore Ravens. As the Bills suffer in their first loss of the year down in Miami, they're still 2-1. and one. They're still in real good shape. I know the Bills were having some injury problems in that game, more specifically from uh, Monday night against the Titans. But still, I mean, Buffalo is just a loaded team, and I really don't think they'll be much of a concern I don't know the extent. I don't know the extent of it. Um, I know one of their corners. They uh, he got real badly injured, and it could be a serious neck injury. So, you know, my thoughts and prayers go out to him. Hopefully, everything's going to be okay. But still, I mean, the Bills—they're just a real solid team. All th- you know, all together. Baltimore Ravens. It pains me to have to say it as a Steeler fan because I can't stand the Ravens. They look like the best team in the AFC North right now. And it's not just because they're fully healthy. That certainly helps. But it's Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is just kind of going back to his 2019 form. He scored 12 total touchdowns this season. And Lamar is just playing out of his mind so far. He had five five more touchdowns yesterday against New England. I mean, I don't know how you can stop Lamar right now. I think you need to be loaded on defense to do that and put a spy on him in every single game. Which leads me to the Buffalo Bills. I think they have the defense that can beat Lamar. I think they can contain him. And if Buffalo's going to win this game, they got to beat the Ravens at their own game, which is outshoot them and score a lot of points and get lots of yards. Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs, they definitely have that capability of doing that. So, uh, yeah, this has all the makings for being Game of the Week right here, and I think it is going to be a phenomenal game this week. I really do. So, I have picked the Ravens all three weeks this season to start the season, and I think that comes to an end right here. I'm going to go with the Buffalo Bills to rebound after that loss to the Miami Dolphins, and I got them taking care of business in Baltimore I think Lamar is going to do everything he possibly can to keep the Ravens in this game. And I think that, you know, Josh Allen is just going to ball out here. At the end of the day, though, I just think Buffalo is too explosive on offense for that Ravens defense to contain because Baltimore's let down on defense so far. They have not looked good defensively, and now they're going up against that high-powered Bills offense. I think Buffalo's offense is better than Baltimore's defense. That's my takeaway for this one. So I'm going to go with the Buffalo Bills to get the job done over the Ravens and prove to 3-1. Give me the Bills. All righty, next up we got the Chargers and the Texans. This one is down in Houston as the Chargers got schlacked at home by the Jags 38-10. Justin Herbert did not play well at all. The whole team did not play well at all, and they're one and two. I was real high on the Chargers this year because I really believed that they would be the team to dethrone Kansas City in the AFC West, but now it just looks like that the narratives are just being reinforced and L.A. is just you know, continuing to struggle. I just don't like how the Chargers are playing to start this season. Then you got the Houston Texans. The Texans lost a close one to the Chicago Bears. But I got to tell you one thing about the Texans. They make it close too. They have uh, made things incredibly close with their opponents so far. But uh, I just think that L.A. is just kind of due for a spark, no pun intended. But uh, I think that Justin Herbert is just due to have a good game. And the Texans, you know, they haven't won yet. 
and they're just kind of being who I thought they were, just a young team that just needs a quarterback and they need, you know, continuity with offense and defense. And they just don't know how to close out a game yet. I'm not saying they're the worst team in the league, but they definitely don't look good right now. So with all that being said, I think the Chargers rebound from that terrible loss to the Jags, and I think they get the job done over Houston to improve to 500, keeping the Texans winless at 0-3-1. Give me the Chargers to knock off the Texans. All right, kicking off the later slate of games. First to bat, we got the Arizona Cardinals and the Carolina Panthers. This one is down in Charlotte. As the Cardinals losing at home to the Rams, something else that they that they excel at. They just can't beat the Rams, period. I mean, Sean McVay has owned the, Car has owned the Cardinals since he became LA's head coach, and they especially can't beat them in Arizona. So that's just another thing right there. I mean... Arizona's just not a good team. Since they were 7-0 and last year, they're now 4-8. and 4-8 and since that 7-0 and record last year. And Arizona is just not playing well at all. I just don't buy the hype with them. I don't think they're a good team. I don't think Cliff Kingsbury's a good coach at all. I think he's very overrated. And I think they're missing, to, I think they're missing Deshaun um, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Arizona's just not looking good right now. Carolina, on the other hand, they're not good either, but they got that first dub against New Orleans Saints yesterday and improved to 1-2. and two. And uh, I don't know, I mean, when Christian McCaffrey gets the touches and Baker Mayfield has a, good, has a good guy in his backfield, I think Baker Mayfield has a good chance of succeeding. I mean, Carolina's defense, it looked like they played well. I just think the problem with Carolina's coaching, Matt Rule is just not a good head coach. So both these teams are not looking good so far. However, there is a takeaway for this game. The last time these two teams played, Carolina blew them out of the water with Cam Newton, granted. But I don't know. It just kind of seems like the Panthers just always seem to beat the Cardinals. I don't know what it is, but they always seem to beat them. Even last year when Carolina was terrible and Arizona was off to that red-hot start, Carolina whopped them. So... Do I think history can repeat itself again and the Panthers can beat the Cardinals again and drop them to one and three? Yes, I do. Upset of the week. I am not giving up on these upsets until I get one right, man. I am bound to get an upset of the week correctly. There's 18 weeks in a season. I am bound to get an upset right. I don't care if it takes me the playoffs or even the friggin' Super Bowl. I am determined to to get an upset right this season at some point. I got the Carolina Panthers knocking off the Arizona Cardinals because Arizona's struggling. I don't see how they go into Carolina, beat Baker Mayfield, who has experience winning as a starting quarterback. Give me the Panthers to beat the Cardinals. Next up, we got the New England Patriots and the Green Bay Packers at Lambeau. New England is 1 and 2. They lost at home to Baltimore. Meanwhile, the Packers are 2 and 1. They went down to Tampa and beat the quarterback the Patriots used to have in Tom Brady. More on the Patriots later. But yeah, I thought Green Bay would get absolutely killed down in Tampa, but uh their defense played really well. I don't think Aaron Rodgers in the offense did anything spectacular if you looked at that game, but that was the defense that won that game for Green Bay. Now, granted, you know, Tom Brady was missing a lot of his firepower on the offense there. But still, I mean, Green Bay's defense did what they needed to do to make, to uh, limit Tom Brady as much as they could and get the dubs. So Green Bay, they did a good job. Now they come back home to go to – now they come back home 2-1 and one playing Tom Brady's old team in New England – Unfortunate news for the Patriots, Mac Jones suffered a gruesome leg injury against the Ravens, and it did not look good. He needed help tiptoeing into the locker room, and it does not look good for Mac Jones. He could miss potentially the rest of the season, if not most of it. You know, best case scenario for Mac Jones is that he misses most of the season. Now, obviously, yeah, I hate the Patriots, but, you know, you, you never want to see an injury like that with anybody, especially a young guy like Mac Jones. So, 
Mac, take care, buddy. Hopefully you get better. Hopefully it's not too serious. And uh, hopefully you recover soon. You know, because that, that did not look good at all. And you could see it on Mac Jones's face. So I believe Brian Hoyer is New England's backup, if I'm not mistaken. I can't believe that guy's still in the league. But, uh, yeah, it's just going to be a tough road ahead for New England without uh, Mac Jones. I mean, I thought the Patriots were going to be in for a rough year already. But now they don't have Mac Jones, who could kind of get the job done for them, but not completely if he could break out of the game manager role. So, uh, yeah, New England, it's just not looking good for him. Green Bay is favored by 11 for this game as of right now, and this is my point spread of the week. I got the Packers covering that easily and getting a lot more. Green Bay covers the spread here. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to go off on New England. They're not going to have any answers on offense because their defense is just uh, not playing well so far. I got Green Bay with my point spread covering that 11 easily and getting some more. 31-10. to 10. Give me Green Bay all over New England for this one. Next up, we got my toilet bowl of the week. Denver Broncos and the Las Vegas Raiders. This one is out in the out in uh, Vegas. The Broncos, they are 2 and 1, but they are a very overrated 2 and 1. Denver's just not a good team. You know, there's a reason I said Denver would finish last in the AFC West for a reason, and I know they're not in last place right now, but I still think come the end of the season Denver is going to end up in last. Nathaniel Hackett is an absolute moron, and he's holding this team back. Denver just has no continuity with offense whatsoever, and it, it took Russell Wilson one good drive to barely get the job done over San Francisco when they were in control enough to win that game. I just don't think the Broncos are playing well at all. And, you know, I know everyone likes to say, well, it's a new offense, well, it's just this... How many games does it take a quarterback to learn a new offense? You know, you, you can't keep using that excuse with Russ. I mean, he put together a good drive, but he just needs to do more of it. Denver's just not a good team. I mean, sure, their defense is strong, but Denver is just not a good team offensively. And then going in the desert to play Vegas, I mean, I think the Broncos' defense can limit the Raiders, but... I just think Vegas is just way too good to be 0-3. They should have at least two wins. I'm sorry, they should. They should have at least two wins. Okay? Because there is no way possible they should have lost yes, um, last week to Arizona. And then I honestly think they should have beaten Tennessee. The Titans were doing everything they could to hand Vegas that game. And uh, Vegas couldn't capitalize in the end. So Vegas should be 2-1 and one, in my opinion. Um, the takeaway for me here is that the Broncos usually struggle in Vegas. And I think their struggles continue there. I just think Vegas is hungry for a win. I think that their fortunes finally stop. Their misfortunes finally stop here. And I think that the Raiders get their first win of the year against the Broncos. Give me the Raiders. To knock off the Broncos, I got Denver's offense stalling again. I mean, hey, they lost to the Seahawks. They can lose to the 0-3 Raiders. We got Sunday Night Football coming up next. Check your local listings as we got a rematch of Super Bowl 55. Kansas City Chiefs, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Rematch of Super Bowl 55, same venue as that Super Bowl was also played in Raymond James Stadium. Both teams have the same record. Kansas City is 2-1. Tampa is also 2-1. The Chiefs losing to the Indianapolis Colts. Tampa losing to the Green Bay Packers. So a lot of similarities between these two entering this matchup in particular. Take a look at the offensive side. Kansas City is still playing well. Patrick Mahomes, I mean, sure, he didn't really have all that good of a game, but, you know, you look at... KC's offense, they should still be a top offensive team in the league. And I just don't think that they haven't missed a beat. Sure that they uh, got cooled down a little bit. You could really say the, the past two weeks because they got limited a little bit against LA. But uh, I think that they have a really big task on their hands going down to Tampa to play the Bucks, and they're being carried by their defense so far. 
Um, so yeah, that's the story with Kansas City. Meanwhile, Tampa Bay, they are two and one, and I honestly think they should be a little bit worse. I think they should have lost to New Orleans, but thanks to Jameis Winston being Jameis Winston, the Saint the uh, Bucks were able to knock off the Saints. And then obviously yesterday they lose to the Green Bay Packers. So I mean the Bucks, they are just not off to a good start. I mean, their defense is playing well, but this could finally be the year where Tom Brady starts to show his age, and I think he's showing his age right now. He just is not playing well. You know, I, I just don't think that Brady has had a standout game so far this year, and I think that's what's going to cost Tampa down the long run if they can't figure it out on offense. You know, there's no excuse why not to. I know they are dealing with injuries, but Tampa is just not clicking on offense so far. And that missed two-point conversion, I think that showed it. So, I really don't want to bet against Tom Brady here, let alone in back-to-back -back weeks. But I think that despite Tampa's defense coming into this game, because... I think now Kansas City is going to have the blueprints looking at that Super Bowl game that they had against them. They are going to figure something out, and I got them going down to Tampa, and I got them beating the Buccaneers to avoid two straight losses. I can't recall a time Kansas City... You know what? I think the Chiefs may have lost two in a row last year, but I think that they're just ironically better, even though that they don't have Tyree Kill anymore and they don't have Byron Pringle anymore. I just still think Kansas City's just clicking on all cylinders. I think they're too good to pass up on here. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Kansas City Chiefs to go down to Tampa and knock off Tom Brady's Buccaneers to drop them to two straight losses. And then concluding week four, we got Sunday night football, or uh, Monday night football rather, a rematch of the NFC Championship from last year. L.A. Rams and the San Francisco 49ers. This one is in San Francisco. Old rivalry, too. These two go back to the 1950s. As the Rams coming off a win over the Cardinals, they are 2-1 and one on the season. But L.A., uh, offensively, they are just not looking good. And the defense, sure, they played well, but I think L.A. is just not looking real good right now. They look like they're starting to suffer from the hangover a little bit. 49ers, they had a very bad loss to the Denver Broncos last night. But I will say one thing. If there's one team in the Kyle Shanahan era that the 49ers have always played well, it's the Rams. 49ers are 4-1 this decade against the Rams, 6-1 against them since Kyle Shanahan became head coach in 2019. So yeah, the 49ers, they have had the Rams number. I think San Francisco's defense is going to be able to limit Matthew Stafford because one thing here that I've noticed, Matthew Stafford don't win in prime time either. I learned that the hard way last year when uh, the Rams got beat up by, guess who, the 49ers on Monday Night Football. I learned to, I mean, sure, I may have fallen for false hope for the uh, season opener, but Matthew Stafford just has not looked good so far. And I think San Francisco's defense is going to be able to come to life for this one. They're going to want revenge from that NFC Championship loss. And I am actually going to go with the 49ers to knock off the Rams. Biggest X factor for me, Debo Samuel. He's always the biggest X factor. He got roughed up a little bit against Denver, but Jimmy Garoppolo, he knows how to use uh, Debo Samuel. And I think if he gets George Kittle involved, limits the mistakes, gets the run game going, uses Debo Samuel to be the, the virtuoso that he is, I think the 49ers have a great chance to win. And I give them a really good chance at beating the Rams. You know, I just don't trust Matthew Stafford in prime time. And I just think that the Rams are just due for another loss. They just have not looked impressive so far. Nearly blowing it to Atlanta. And then they beat the Cardinals, but they just did it not really convincingly, in my opinion. I think San Francisco wants a dub. I think they want to beat their rivals, and I think they will do just that. Give me the 49ers to knock off the Rams. That'll do it. Those are my Week 4 picks 2022 NFL season. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. This is Steel Sermon checking on out for the day. May God be with you all.